This is a podcast from The Bugle. The shadows move in the castle keep, robes rustle in the darkness, a lantern is unshuttered, casting its low light across the arcane symbols carved into the stone. Without a word, dim figures move into a circle, movements practised and smooth. Power gathers in the shadows, somehow making pitch black more pitchily black. Somehow the silence rises to a hum, harmonies sliding into dissonance, writhing up the back of the neck of the one forbidden watcher. She barely breathes, terrified of discovery, then bites her tongue to muffle a scream as a hand grasps her ankle. She turns like a snake and mouths furiously, I thought you were asleep. Teeth gleam at her in a small face. I wanted to come watch. Silly, it's not for watching, it's the gargle. The sonic glossy magazine, the sonic... <laughs> The Sonic Glossy Magazine to the Bugle's audio newspaper for a visual world. I'm your host, Alice Fraser, and your guest editors for this week's edition of the magazine are Charlie George and Tom Neenan. Welcome. Hello. Hi. My mouth is not working today. (laughs) Well, my throat is, uh, is very gravelly, so we can compliment each other on that. We'll do a jazz edition. I've stolen actual equipment to be here, so that's good. (laughs) Before we join our gravelly voices together and raise them in a chorus of praise to our top stories for this week, let's have a look at the front cover of the magazine. The front cover this week is a newly divorced Mrs. Claus talking about mental load at Christmas (laughs) in a tell-all, reveal-all uh, double fold center spread uh, mm. this December. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Santa delivers the presents, but who thinks about the presents? <laughs> that is a real question. <laughs> and the satirical cartoon this week is a picture of world leaders leaders at a meeting workshopping better solutions to geopolitical issues than war. The whiteboard shows options including weaponized Olympics genetic experiment competition and online flame wars to the death (laughs) and now it's time for our top story top story this week virtual reality goggles for mice uh news and that's the (laughs) that is the news uh that you can study the brains of mice better if you give them virtual reality goggles. Tom Neenan, you live in a mediated reality. Can you unpack this story for us? (laughs) I do. Uh, This is another chapter in the rich world of uh, science, or as I call it, uh, vermin bullying, which is most (laughs) of science for the last uh, 20 years. Um, So yes, so we have to look at a guy called Daniel Dombeck, uh, who works at the Northwest University of Illinois. And basically... They got, I'm guessing that they just don't have the woodworking skills to create the mazes they used to. Um, and it, <laughs> it was somehow easier, rather than make a maze, to make goggles for mice that replicate a maze, or I guess any other kind of um, environment for them, that then they can sort of navigate their way through. Um, and this is you what happens when mo- Pinky and the Brain cosplay goes wrong. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I always think of like, you know how Fivel goes west? He was a mouse, wasn't he? Fivel goes Black Mirror. That's what this vibe is giving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So basically they're creating a matrix for mice, but without even the sort of side benefit of those mice being used as batteries or whatever. And I, it just seems cruel. It doesn't seem like it would have any real world benefits other than the fact that they don't have to make sets for mice anymore. It's what, you remember when, like, all those Star Wars films started using the volume instead of actual sets? And they, it started sort of, I don't know, it lost a bit of its, a bit of the the je ne sais quoi of, like, those films. And this feels a bit the same, but for mice, and I I do not approve. I think leave them alone. Well, also, I mean, they say they've created virtual reality for mice. What they they say they, they have created a simulation that is indistinguishable from the real world. Yeah. How do they know? How, like, have they asked a mouse? <laughs> they say they've observed brain patterns that are too large to be attached to freely moving mice. Mm. But that could just be the brain patterns of a mouse that's going, holy f***, someone stapled goggles to my head. <laughs> <laughs> but also, yeah, you're, do you're going to find... Go on. 
Oh no, please! I was, I was just, I was gonna make a joke about um, uh, cyberpunk. So please, go, <laughs> go no, I was thinking that. I bet, I bet they all look like they're at Burning Man, don't they? Like these cute <laughs> steampunk <laughs> mice. Yes. I love that. Um, but do rod? Like I was just thinking, like do rodents need to escape reality? Like isn't it just eating cereal from our cupboards? I suppose, like, like if you could remove all cats from like the world, that would be quite nice. Like, and would it be like you know, like how people having like these VR second lives or holidays? Like, what would a mouse vacation from, like, the everyday treadmill of life look like? Would it be, like, just, like, a very different wheel that doesn't squeak or something? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Mice already exist in, like, their own virtual reality where, because they're incontinent, just they're, the whole, everything they see is a toilet, which is heaven, which is lovely. <laughs> Did you just say all, uh, all mice incontinent? <laughs> yeah, apparently so. As, I, as someone with a mouse problem in my house right now... They are they are one hundred percent constantly incontinent. You know what? Do you want with them? I've lost all sympathy. <laughs> I mean, again, it, it feels like there's so much projecting going on with these mice. You don't know mm. they're incont- incontinent. Incontinent implies they're not doing it on purpose. Right. <laughs> and it isn't a message directly dire- directly aimed at you, Tom. Neenan. <laughs> it's vindictive, is what it is, and I feel I feel <laughs> like I am the victim of this. The thing is, so they will. Could, so they can run around and they'll imagine all the obstacles that they see and things like that and react to them. But that also means that you can do the inverse, which is you can make them run into things because they think they can run around with impunity and then put an obstacle course that, that they keep on bouncing off of. So really, it is ju- it's still just bullying by scientists that, that has, yeah, has gone on for far too long. I'm now back on the mouse's side. I've now decided that I'm, I'm going <laughs> to champion them. <laughs> Your ad section now, because you can't be what you can't buy. And this episode of the podcast is brought to you by the sinking yet joyous feeling you get when you see an online reputation-ruining scandal of a well-respected celebrity by another well-respected online celebrity, and now you have to find out who both of them are so you can be (laughs) properly outraged at their fall from grace. Uh, That's the sponsor for this week. And this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Nice Nostalgia, which is that thing where you remember people or events of the past as though they were nice when they were objectively horrific. <laughs> and, oh no, you're at the ball game. Your boyfriend is sweating and winking at badly disguised friends and family concealed in the crowd. He's going to do a public proposal, you think, as he clutches at his pocket. You can just sense it. You feel like you're on a runaway train. How can you derail the big, impending, capital M moment? This is when you need half a glass of water. (laughs) Half a glass of water delivered directly to the crotch of your Pepe Le Pew 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 Finger Guns performative pre-X. Half a glass of water. Sometimes a short, sharp shock to the balls is what a situation needs. (laughs) And now it's time for AI Crypto Bros at Sea <laughs> news. <laughs> this is a recurring story uh, on the podcast here and, and in the magazine, Tom and Charlie. This is a story that comes around every time people get too rich and they have to jettison something off the boat that is their brain and the thing that they jettison is common sense. Uh they always want to do a nation. They always want to do it on a boat. They always want to make a sovereign territory. Charlie, George, you've wanted to start your own nation before. Can you unpack this story for us? Oh, my gosh, yeah. So they want to... Um, the, the the Blue Sea Frontier Compute Cluster, or BSFCC, very catchy Rolls name. off the Not tongue. Not sure who named it. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, it's just so smooth. Um, they want to uh, become the first ever sovereign territory that relies entirely on uh, AI for its future, which I like to imagine there'll be lots of conversations on board this ship that's like, AI captain, no I captain, no AI captain, no I captain. Um, <laughs> But yeah, essentially, it's another one of those things where um, they want to do uh, like um, an operation in international waters. And whenever someone says that, it's never good, is it? Um, it's usually because <laughs> they, cause they want to be unregulated. Um, and I think a part of it is to do with the fact, if I was reading the article correctly, like it's to do with um, uh, the fact that there is some regulations coming in around AI and that they're sort of trying to control it more. So they've decided the response to that is to create their own frontier cluster 
in the middle of nowhere where they can sort of do what they want. Um, and I imagine that, you know, maybe, I don't know what they'll get up to out there, maybe sort of sea shanties or, or like algorithmic <laughs> anthems will be made by this thing. What I couldn't get is, are they going to live there? Is anyone going to live there? Or is it going to be a sovereign state that is AI and runs on AI and no one kind of exists in it? That's what I couldn't quite get to the bottom of. Because I don't think I'd like to live there on a place that runs on... Um, seemingly the whims of an algorithm. Doesn't Do you seem think like it's going to be, be like hell? Like, is it is it hell in that space thing where it's like so? It's literally just a machine that operates it, and instead of like the ship's wheel, it's like just a sort of spinning, spinning yeah. algorithm type thing. I don't so know. there would be a small there would be a small population for maintenance and security mm-hmm. forces, uh, and other than that, it would mainly just be a place to keep all of your computers so that you can dodge international law because, of course, the law of the land won't let you be as m- moral and kind as you'd like to be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the horrifying regulations that are coming into place is, is something actually genuinely I just read. My, my brother <laughs> is in a think tank about ethics in AI and he just asked me to cut a thousand words out of his paper, which is specifically on how you assign fault when an AI, like, tells someone to kill themselves. Oh, um, God. So, like, what what doctrines there are in law that might, you know, figure out who could possibly be accountable because someone f***ing should be. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, when that kid asked for a fun activity to do from Alexa and Alexa said sticking a fork into a, um, into a PowerPoint might be a good idea. You know, it feels like someone Jeez. should be at blame for that. But these people are trying to set sail away from that blame and onto yeah. the high yeah. seas. <laughs> I, f- I find myself deeply conflicted about this story because on one hand, it is a horrifying dystopian scenario that can only end in at best abuses of power um, mm. and at worst a, a kind of a, a creepy horror movie. But also I watched Sequest DSV as a child. Um, <laughs> And so the idea of an autonomous underwater nation state is like deeply appealing to me. And if there's a dolphin that you could weaponize um, to have human <laughs> intelligence, I'm I'm all in, you know? What a reference. What an absolute plucking that from like the depths of my of my youth. Uh, <laughs> something I didn't even know I missed. But yeah, Sequest. What was it? Sequest? DSV. I DSV. Had Roy Scheider in it from Jaws. <laughs> Can you expl- yeah, explain it to me? How would you summarise it to someone who's never seen it? Sequest. Sequest DSV was a beautiful utopian story, um, like an underwater Star Trek for children. <laughs> in which, uh, <laughs> oh, sort of a utopian and I scientific underwater community had a, a, a dolphin that could talk to a, a handsome boy. And mm-hmm. that's about all there was to it, really. It was nice. <laughs> I love it. Dolphins and hats. Yeah, because I'm thinking like Atlantis, but with like more chatbots and data. And I've always thought like, you know, underwater worlds or like, like you say, like a sovereign sort of landscape. Isn't there a film like Waterworld and stuff? It's always sort of sexy and watery and amazing. And I think it takes the edge off if it's like automated yeah. and robotic. But also mainly a scheme for, let's face it, tax evasion, right? Like surely. And for what sounds like crimes. <laughs> <laughs> And now it's time for your reviews. Mm. As you know, each week we ask our guest editors to review something out of five stars. Charlie George, what have you brought in for us this week? So I'm going to review Pretty Patel's Instagram advent calendar series. <laughs> it's really spectacular. I highly recommend going and checking it out if you haven't. Um, but I have only given it 1.5 stars um, because of the low quality visuals and the editing. Um, the door that she opens looks like it was found on clip art and isn't fireproof. Um, also, the content was weak. Um, I'm not sure you should talk about the importance of supporting local businesses in a cost of living crisis whilst wearing a Louis Vuitton <laughs> scarf. Um, that could be perceived <laughs> as insensitive, maybe a little bit cold. Uh, but the comments were somewhat enjoyable. So that sort of uh, made the 1.5. She is an attractive woman, even if she wants other migrants dead. Um, Ring the politics bell, Ped. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 1.5 stars Mm. out of 5 for Pretty Patel's Instagram (laughs) advent calendar. Tom, what have you brought in for us this week? Well, I went on a roller coaster. So I went to what originally was going to be billed as a carol service. 
Um, I'm not doing. It was a roller coaster. It was ended up being a roller coaster. <laughs> I got my picture. I was happy. Um, no, so it, but then it it morphed in the publicity to be Christmas songs. So it would be a Christmas, a sort of a, co- a chorus of Christmas songs. The set list was bizarre. So you open on Silent Night, classic, yeah. absolute classic, good opener, strong opener. Then straight into Fairy Tale of New York. Which, given that we've recently lost uh, the Pogues frontman, is obviously very meaningful, but difficult. Also, not a, not obviously a carol, a Christmas song. Then they go for they're back into carols for Oh Holy Night. After that, um, so we're really kind of flip flopping between sort of pop and and sort of choral, but they're they're managing it. They're keeping it going. Then, don't let the bells end by uh, by the darkness. They do sort of a, a sort of choral version of that. <laughs> I am spinning out. I'm like, where are they going to go next? What's happening? <laughs> then they hit us with Winter Wonderland, which is like neither sort of a pop Christmas song or a choral song. It's like sort of, a, you know, it's a standard. It's a Christmas standard. They do quite well on that. Then... Um, Good King Wenceslas. Last. Then they bring out Good King Wenceslas. Last. <laughs> and I don't, I'm now, there's like two songs left and I'm like, this could go either way. This could be amazing. <laughs> then they get All I Want For Christmas Is You. And I'm like, okay, fine. Then they end, they end on a German Christmas song I had never heard before. I tried to record <laughs> some of it or work out what the lyrics were and I couldn't, I couldn't even hear it. So they end on this like German song in German that no one understands. And then they leave and I'm bamboozled. It was an incredible night. I feel very Christmassy, but what originally was going to be a sort of evening of carols ended up being sort of a grab bag of any Christmas songs you could possibly want. <laughs> I'm going to give it five stars. I had a great time. There was free mulled wine. Um, but they couldn't decide on a tone, and uh, and I, if anything, I think that added to it. So yeah, that would be my the, and that was at Saint. I've written Saint Adelaide's Church. Is there a Saint Adelaide? I don't think there is. I think I've miswritten that. Anyway, I went to this church. It was weird. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Five stars. That sounds. Yeah. Incredible. I feel like what, what you've experienced there is the reason that I can't watch TikTok because I feel like everyone has a, a brain that looks for narratives in yeah. the world, but I feel like particularly people in our job, our job is to like find and create stories. And so if someone presents you with eight pieces of information in a row, you think, well, what are they trying to tell me <laughs> with these eight pieces of information? Yeah. And if they're just being randomly thrown at you by an algorithm that is essentially throwing the dice, presumably <laughs> from a floating nation state in the middle of the ocean, so it's not responsible for what it's doing to your brain yeah you get i get like i genuinely if i'm doing tiktok or reels or any kind of instagram thing i get like eight or nine videos in and i feel like i'm losing touch with reality because i'm like what but why but why this one then yeah. what are you saying with the next one like what are you trying to tell me so weird so uh but you know you'll have made it as a stand-up when you appear next to someone doing diy a set of yours appears next to someone doing diy or cutting an avocado then you'll be like right i've finally yeah. made it I feel like you know your level of success on the internet by the amount of deranged meanness you get in the comments. <laughs> so, oh, there it is. Is that the marker? It starts with friends and family saying, oh, how lovely. Mm. And uh, once you get to, who is this person? I don't understand her accent. Um, <laughs> then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in now the big leagues now. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for rocket fuel news. A Japanese company has been testing out a new rocket fuel that is made out of cow dung. Mm. Uh, Charlie, George, you've gone to the moon before. Can you unpack this story (laughs) for us? Yeah, so a Japanese space company uh, is testing out new cow dung-based rocket fuel. um, And this experiment saw the engine blast out blue and orange flame 10 to 15 metres horizontally. um, And they are pretty chuffed about it because the raw material from the region's cows has so much potential, apparently. It's nice for shit to finally have uh, great potential. And they're looking for an energy source that they already have loads of, and they have quite a lot of cow waste. Um, (laughs) uh, And I think... (laughs) This was this was my favorite quote. I'm excited to think that our cow waste could be used to make it fly. He said of the rocket. Um, So yeah, their 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 space program is going green, or should we say brown? Um, (laughs) uh, With (laughs) eco friendly cow dung rocket fuel. Um, I I like to I like to think of it as the term dung shui, but I don't know how acceptable that is. Achieving balance in the cosmos uh, by redistributing the shit. Um, I like that. Uh, it's it's pollution-free era with uh, dung rocket fuel. 
<laughs> well, I mean, sort of cows, uh, cow uh, waste, particularly cow farts, are one of the most polluting things going mm. round. So it feels like maybe if they can if they can capitalize on that, it'll end up being a good thing. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Or I mean, you could just do it the old-fashioned way and, and feed a cow enough beans that it fires itself to the moon. <laughs> um. So you know, you just said we as humans search, search for narrative, right? even if things yes. aren't connected. I'm looking back yes. at the three stories that we're discussing on the gargle today, right? <laughs> so we've had three blind mice. We've had a yeah. cow jumping over the moon. Ah. And of course, Humpty Dumpty sat on the Blue Sea Frontier computer cluster uh, <laughs> created by US firm <laughs> Dell Complex. Like... Is it? Is, is it? A I, I genuine... was thinking the owl and the pussycat went to sea, but like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> the AI and the it all matches up. Is it deliberate that this is a nursery rhyme themed episode, or is that just something that's happened? I think it's probably subliminal that this has right. happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but you know, this is the this is the problem when you look for news that isn't political. You find the real meanings underneath everything. Yeah, I think I've uncovered yeah. it. And there's nothing more meaningful than a fairy tale. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would like, like, I think I like to be more eco-friendly and I think that using my own farts or shit for stuff would be quite helpful, actually. As, as a woman with IBS, <laughs> I think, I think sort of that would be great. I've, I've been thinking a lot about death and mortality recently and I think my shit being flyed from a rocket into space is quite <laughs> an interesting one that people haven't really thought of before. <laughs> they always think of eulogies and what song you'd play and cremation. Just what no one's ever thought about. I want to fling my shit into space. That's sort of <laughs> ultimate ultimate the legacy. Final insult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now it's time for our Christmas gift guide section. Uh, where we ask our guest editors to recommend gifts that you might buy for your family or friends or frenemies or enemies this Christmas. Charlie, what do you recommend people put their hard-earned cash into to bring the joy of the season to their loved ones? Oh, well, I have a very special product product for you all. I have the Merry Misdirection mangle, uh, Manual. Sorry, the Merry Misdirection Manual. The Mangle is a very different product. Um, the Merry Misdirection Manual, sometimes known as Jingle Bell Jargon. Um, ha- uh, and it's basically a book of stock phrases <laughs> for a merry, drama-free Christmas. Um, so has your mother asked again when you're going to have an immaculate conception? or bring someone home who's actually worthy of the kingdom of heaven. Um, Try laughing hysterically and saying, sorry, I can't concentrate whilst your paper crown is on backwards. It will be discombobulating (laughs) and take some time to realise there's no front to a paper crown. Um, Is everyone asking about your weight gain? Try the phrase, my New Year's resolution is to die alone. It's a guaranteed conversation stopper. Um, uh, I've got some other ones. If you don't have money for elaborate presents and you're feeling criticised and diminished by what you've bought and the looks on people's faces as they unwrap your gifts, try sharing some random facts or social commentary and be remembered for completely different reasons. Did you know I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas was written by a man by psoriasis? (laughs) This one is true, actually, and it's great. In Catalonia, there's a unique Christmas tradition called Cagatio, where children beat a smiling log until it poops out small presents. Yes, you heard that right, (laughs) pooping logs. Um, The Merry Misdirection Manual is available now in all good bookshops. (laughs) Wonderful. And Tom Neenan, what have you got for us to give this season? I've been looking into personalised 3D photo crystals. Um, If you haven't seen them, they are little like blocks of sort of glass or perspex um, and you can have an image put in them. And what what my friends have been doing over sort of the last few months is testing basically what is and isn't allowable to be put in as a photo on the personalized 3D photo crystal. So obviously it's advertised with like a picture of a dog, a picture of the family, a picture of a toddler. So, uh, and so you can obviously upload the picture and it will reject it or not. So far, um, you can, things that have been reject, uh, things that have been accepted are uh, a middle finger, uh, flipping the bird at someone, <laughs> that's acceptable. Uh, similarly, um, most just like text. So like if you, if you upload most like text, it will say whatever you want it to. Um, and coming back to what you said before, um, if you wanted to, you, you can upload pictures of dog feces if you want that. Those all go through. Things that haven't gone through so far are, um, anything pornographic, 
we haven't tested it in a way that is that I, I think is uh, is upsetting to anyone. But you can't do anything pornographic, <laughs> or um, it can't be a, li- a licensed photo. But use with it that you will. That you can post your enemy over Christmas. Um, a uh, your hand doing the middle finger, which when emblazoned in crystal, when you put that much effort into it, really feels personal and really feels like you mean it. So tell someone you hate. Uh, that you hate them this Christmas with a middle finger in a personalised 3D crystal. What a wonderful gift. <laughs> I uh, I have the recommendation of uh, a number of options that you can bring to uh, Christmas to answer the question that young children ask of you about whether Santa is real or not, uh, including options like, uh, yes, Santa is real and he's watching you right now, uh, Yes, Santa is a representation of the spirit of giving, and when you become old enough, you too become a Santa. Uh, <laughs> or yes, Santa is real. He's he's actually Satan. He's spelled backwards, and he's here to destroy the spirit of uh, Christian Christmas and turn it into a pagan <laughs> celebration of capitalistic hedonism. Uh, weep, weep, child, for the folly of mankind. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of this episode of the Gargle. I'm flipping through the ad section of the back of the magazine. Charlie, have you got anything to plug? Can I say my social media stuff? Because I'm basically doing some work in progress shows for my first ever stand-up hour, which I'm going to do at Edinburgh next year. Um, I have those coming up in the new year um, in London and Leicester Comedy Festival and various places. But the best place to find out about that would be to follow me online at Charlie George comedy um and at cg does comedy on twitter but at charlie george comedy on everywhere else wonderful Uh, i recommend that while social media lasts cg comedy is a good follow Mm -hmm. and tom have you got anything to plug i've got a few things to plug i realize i've got a website and i pay for i update it every year uh and i pay for the uh the web hosting and i never direct anyone to it it's tomneenan.com it doesn't really do anything it's just some pictures of me and some links to like my showreel and stuff, but just go on that if you if you want to see some pictures and some links to reviews and things, because <laughs> um, I pay for it. So may as well may as well get some hits. Tell you also what's a great Christmas present is one of Tom Neenan's paintings that. He oh, has. oh yeah, go on Instagram TP Neenan yeah, on paintings. Instagram and say if you like any of the paintings, uh, or if you have any recommendations, then I'm happy to do that because. I sort of clock off work on I think the 21st, 22nd, and I uh, I will probably be doing some painting at home. So yeah, request those. Good point. Thank you, Alice. That's all right. Uh, I, I've got your back. Thank you. Can I get a painting of my um, my ship being flung from space from a rocket, please? Is that... I've already started it. That was a given. That was <laughs> already. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> It's going to be a brown Christmas. I <laughs> I'm Alice Fraser. You can find me online at patreon.com slash Alice Fraser, where I run two writers meetings a week. If you are working on anything creative and you would like to join a gang of people, I also do a salon every week, which is a more general chat, which you can join in on, on or just lurk in the darkness and watch people have a conversation. Uh, patreon.com slash Alice Fraser. It's also where you get a... Uh, first look at whatever I'm releasing whether it's stand-up specials podcasts or blogs and that that all starts at a dollar a month and when I say it starts at a dollar a month you get everything currently for a dollar a month and I'm gonna at some point bring bring <laughs> different levels of access back in uh, but at the moment you just get a ridiculous amount of value for money this is an Alice Fraser and Bugle Podcasts production your editor is Ped Hunter your executive producer is Chris Skinner I'll talk to you again next week You can listen to other programs from The Bugle, including The Bugle, Catharsis, Tiny Revolutions, Top Stories and The Gargle, wherever you find your podcasts.